Hey guys, Mr. Wood here for next lesson in chapter five. But I know you guys need their jokes, so here we go. Why are giraffes so slow to apologize? It takes them a long time to swallow their pride. You know, they got that long neck. This one's better. How do you catch a squirrel? You climb up a tree and you act like a nut. There you go. That's the highlight of this. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to work on worksheet 5.2 and with a little review of worksheet 5.1. So let me go over the notes here that we kind of rushed through in class the other day. But let me just review this first of all. So this was... Kind of, kind of the introduction to the chapter. So overall nomenclature, this chapter is going to have nothing to do with numbers or calculator at all. It's going to be do a lot of the periodic table. It's going to be writing formulas. And it's going to be <clears throat> taking formulas, give me names, and then later on in the chapter we'll be given the names, write the formulas. So real quick going over this, talked about this a little bit, but binary compounds are compounds made up of two elements. Water is a binary compound because it's got two elements in it, hydrogen and oxygen. What we worked on first, and we'll review a little bit today, are a binary, so two elements, ionic compounds. Ionic compounds have a metal and a non-metal. And what we're going to learn about today are naming binary, thanks Zion, naming binary, thanks man, have a good weekend naming binary molecular non-ionic compounds when we have two non-metals. And that's what we're going to get into today. But in this, we've already talked about it. I know I went through this quick, but rules. And just like I said, I'm a basketball coach, a golf coach I've been. And there's rules. There's rules in a basketball game. You can't just get a basketball and start running down the floor without dribbling. There's a penalty. The other team gets the ball. Okay, in golf, if you hit the ball out of bounds, there's rules about where you can drop it. The strokes you count. Well, here are the rules. The positive ion is always written first, the negative second. It's always like that. Again, there's two kinds of positive ions. A type 1, I'm going to be using the periodic table a lot. And I'm going to do a few of these again today. But type 1s are when the first element is, is uh, an alkali metal, alkaline earth metal, or aluminum silver zinc and I know you I'll point up the periodic table here in a second and this is actually the first thing we're doing right now is figuring out <clears throat> what categories is following so type one is first column second column or that little diagonal on those you use just the name there's no reference to a number when it's a type one then B a type two and this is all the other metals so if the metal Again, the first element is not in the first column, second column, or that little diagonal of aluminum, zinc, silver. Then you use a Roman numeral. And on point A, the Roman numeral represents the charge. What goes in the blank there is the charge of the ion. Okay, and point B here, <clears throat> you don't need to worry about. We're not going to do the older or classical names. And then negative ions, for right now, are always going to end in ID. They're always going to end in ID. Okay, so that's review. And I know in cohort B, we had more time than we did in A because we had the fire drill. But you can look over that. And you'll have time in class on Monday to work on this. So what we're going to deal, what's new today, are naming, point three, naming molecular compounds. So these are compounds with two non-metals. Okay, so... What those are, are this right here. So, so, and I like the way our book presents this. So the, uh, if the first element is a non-metal, then it's a type three ion. And so again, we're keying off of the first element in the formula and where it's located on the periodic table. If it's a non-metal, it's a type three. And type threes, I think once you've identified those, those are the easiest one to use. Those you use prefixes to indicate the number of atoms in the formula. The first element in the formula use just the name, which is exactly what we were doing. The second element is the name with an ID ending, which is exactly what we were doing. But what's different is the prefixes. And I'm going to write those on the board here in a second. But for the prefixes, they're used to indicate the number of atoms present. 
So you don't have to go through all the steps that we used in terms of finding the Roman numeral. And the one little exception here, the prefix mono is never used for the first element. Okay, so let me I'm put up here. I just, I'm just going to work some problems on the board. So Okay, so here, first of all, on the chalkboard here and behind me are prefixes. And these are ones that you guys are going to have to get into your head. So here are the prefixes. So the prefix for one is mono. Here, I'm going to do this over here. Okay, so for one, so for one, Prefix for one is mono, two you could probably guess, two is di, three you probably might be able to guess two is tri, four is one you may not have, four is tetra, five is penta, on that awful day of 9-11 the, they, they flew into the pentagon and the reason they call it the pentagon is because it's got five sides, six is hexa, Seven is hepta. Eight is octa. So those prefixes you're going to need to remember. Okay. And uh, so now what I'm working on is I'm working on worksheet five, five, two. So that's where I'm at is worksheet five, two. Remember again, what is due on Wednesday, Thursday, okay? So what is due is right here. So you've got two worksheets, worksheet 5.1 and 5.2, and we've done, on the previous lesson, we had a lot of 5.1. Now we're going to do a lot of 5.2. And then these problems, 1 through 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and then question 18, omit A, and then 20, 22, 72, 74, 84, okay? Okay, so back to the board. Okay, so number one. So I again am on worksheet, I'm on worksheet 5.2. So WS 5.2. Okay, so number one, and I will tell you on this worksheet, I'm just gonna tell you right now, the first, the first 19. First 19 are all type threes. So I'm going to do some of these. So number one. But again, what we do here is we base this off of the first element. And the first element carbon, so I locate the, it's based off the location of the first element in the formula. Well, carbon is right here. It's a non-metal. So that's where I use prefixes. So this is carbon dioxide. Now, when you decide it's a type 3, that's where we're going to use these prefixes. And the only time I don't use a prefix is if the first, if it's a type 3, is if the first element's a 1. Okay, so number 2, CO. So again, carbon is, again, that's the first thing I do. So it's a type 3 because this is a non-metal. So it's carbon monoxide. So, so the second element, whatever it is, you always use the prefix. The first element, if it's a one, you don't write it. It's you don't write in the one. So then SO2. So again, I look sulfur up on the periodic table. So we go back and sulfur's right here. So it's another non-metal. So that means it's a type three. So this is where I use prefixes. So I have sulfur. Dioxide. Notice again, every one of these is ending in IDE, and the first one is the name of the element. So by now, if you're following along, you go, well, what happens if the first element isn't a one? Well, remember, might as well continue on. Sulfur again is a non-metal, so this would be sulfur trioxide. Again, I, in the second element, no matter what it is, you always have a reference to its prefix. Okay, number five, so N2O. So this one 
if the first element, if I, first of all, again, I locate N on the periodic table, and N is right here. It's a non-metal, so it's a type 3. And 2, so I have dinitrogen and then 1 monoxide. Again, notice how that's in. Okay, so number six, NO, nitrogen monoxide. Okay, number seven then, the dinitrogen trioxide. Again, the, the, uh, it's N2O3. So again, the first thing I do is I look up the first element in the formula. Um, skipping down a little bit, number, uh, so number 10, so N2O5, so N2, so dinitrogen, five is penta. And if I have a vowel vowel, like penta, tetra, I always drop, the vowel here, so that's what I, I do, pentoxide, pentoxide. So then number um, 14, or let's do, let's, yeah, let's do 14. So 14, S, Cl6. So again, I locate that first element on the periodic table. Sulfur's right here. So this is a, <clears throat> this is a non-metal, this is a type three. So I'd have sulfur. And then six is six again. I can't see it. It's hexa. Hexachloride. Like I said, one through 19, up to 19, they're all type threes. And then after that, I mix them up. Mix them up. So let me go over here and do a couple of these. Almost done. So now I want to go over and do... Number, well, let me start with 21. So KCL. So what I want to do, first of all, again, I locate that first element. Now I mix them up. So 20 through through 30 is a mixture of type 1s, 2s, and 3s. So K, remember, is way over here, right here. That's in the type 1 category, and that is, there's no prefix, there's no Roman numeral. So this is just potassium chloride. Notice again, every one of these is ending as IDE, the potassium chloride. So the first thing you want to do is decide type 1, 2, or 3. If it's a type 1, there's no reference to a number. If it's a type 2, then you'll use a Roman numeral. We'll do one of those. And if it's a type 3, then you use prefixes. Okay, so number 22, S2O3. So again, I look up sulfur on the periodic table. So I'm really using the periodic table a lot now. So sulfur is way over here, which means it's a type 3. It's a non-metal. So this is where I use prefixes. So I have disulfur trioxide. Okay, 23. FeI2. So again, I locate iron on the periodic table, and iron is right here, which is a type two. It's not, it's not one of those two columns or that diagonal of aluminum, zinc, silver for type one. It's not a non-metal. So this is a Roman numeral. This is the trickiest thing. So I have iron and then iodide. And what I talked about in class, and I know I was going through this kind of quickly in class, but right here. The rules in how to find the Roman numeral. So the first thing you do is you find the charge on the second ion. And then you, you take that number. Forget that it's negative. Just take that number, multiply it by the subscript of the second ion. The subscript is a lowercase number. And then divide by the subscript of the first ion. Okay, so those are the steps right there in finding the Roman numeral. So now if I come back here. So if I go to the periodic table and I look up the charge of iodine, it's 1. If I look up iodine on the periodic table in the upper right-hand corner, it's 1. So then I multiply by this. So 1 times 2 is 2. Multiply and then divide. 
And if nothing's written in, that indicates one. So one times two is two divided by one. This is iron to iodine. Okay, hopefully that gets you get you going a little bit. And I know that you guys will have questions when you get here uh, in class on Tuesday and Wednesday, but be trying those. And again, if you have questions, uh, feel free to email me. And if we need to do a little Google Meet, we can. But we'll, we'll do some more practice in class on Wednesday, Thursday on this. And uh, hey, have a good, uh, a good rest of your day, and I will see you soon.